Well, howdy do. <laughs> Would you like to hear a show that will tickle your funny bone, touch your heart, and set your toes to tapping? Be sure to tune in to Hillbilly Soul Sister Stories on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or any of your favorite podcast platforms. Y'all just come on by while I keep the light on for you. The 28-year-old bank teller dreams of making a 95-yard run with the New York Jets. We live with our reality, but we are not always satisfied. Mary Oates had long ago resigned herself to life, supporting her aged father, moving from one secretarial job to another, until something dramatic happened to her. I'm sorry it has to end like this, Bert. So am I, but, well... I don't think you know what I mean. I do, Mary. You're wonderful to understand. I... I'm in love with Gail. <laughs> I'm glad you're not making it difficult for me. You still don't understand what I mean. Well, what do you mean? This. Yes. Hmm. Our mystery drama, The Romance of Mary Oates, was written especially for Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juren and stars Roberta Maxwell. I'll return shortly with Act One. For many of us, life is a humdrum existence. Same job, same associates, the movies on Saturday night, and the papers on Sunday morning. But every now and then, to some of us, comes a new experience. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Sometimes it is thrust upon us. And dealing with a new and unexpected situation can be nerve-shattering. Miss Mary Oates entered a new situation in her life. And she is now about to experience the consequences. Evening, Miss Oates. The usual? Yes, Jack, please. Looks like we might have some snow. I hadn't noticed. There's something wrong, Miss Oates. You look kind of down. I have something unpleasant to face. That's all. Well, I guess we all have to do that now and then. Here you are. Thanks. Chin up, Miss Oates. Sorry if I'm late, Mary. I just got here. What difference would it make anyway, Bert? It's our goodbye. Final meeting, fade out, etc. I'm sorry, Mary. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry is just a word, Bert. You're tickled pink. I don't see any point to this, Mary. Oh, but I do. You're going off to someone else. Look, I, I know you're hurt. You don't know the half of it. But what can I do or say? I don't have any control over you. You're wonderful to, to understand this. I'm in love with Gail. Thanks for not making it too difficult. You don't understand what I mean. When I say I'm sorry, it has to end this way. Well, well, what do you mean? This. Yes. <laughs> what the devil? Get that gun away from her! Oh. Uh, uh, Miss Oates, you're awake? Yes. I'm Dr. Edwards. Where am I? A memorial Hospital. I'm not in jail? No, no. I killed him. How come I'm not in jail? Well, you were brought here for observation. Observation? I'm guilty of murder, but I'm not crazy. And no regrets. Life without him wasn't worth a toothpick to me. He was my whole life. Do you want to tell me about him? Bert. His name was Bert. We met in that bar. Does my father know I'm here? Yes, yes, he's been notified. We want to learn the reason for your shooting him. Reason? He was leaving me. Um, one of my things... 
In the closet, right over there. My fur jacket? It's there. That coat brought us together. Bert and me. In a roundabout way. Mm-hmm. It all began with that fur coat. I... Well, I wasn't exactly a glamorous woman, Doctor. My father will tell you that. Four months ago, I didn't even wear lipstick. Hi, Dad. I'm home. I'm in the kitchen. Sorry, I'm late. Well, I decided to heat up a frozen pot pie. You know I like my dinner at six. I know, I know. But I had to pick up something I ordered. Yeah, it's like a clothing box. Wait till you see it, Dad. It's what I wanted all my life. And now I've bought it. Well, I just hope it's not another extravagance. Of course it is. But I've saved for it. For the past 17 years, I've saved for this. You never told me you were hurting for something. It's been my little secret dream. I never told anyone about it. All right, for Pete's sake, let's see it. <laughs> Isn't it gorgeous? Well, uh, when are you going to wear a thing like that? Dad! A fur jacket. A lot of girls wear them to work. It's genuine mink. How could you afford mink? At the fashion fur outlet. It's not a brand new coat, but no one would ever know it. Well, don't you think it's a little... Uh, pretentious? Wearing that to a secretary's job? All right, Dad. I know what you mean. Don't rub it in. I mean, you never go anywhere but the office. I never wanted to date. You know that. Yeah, it's only too well after living with you for 41 years. So what do you want with a mink coat? Because it's an extravagance. And it's all mine. I wanted it. I'd saved for it. And now I have it. I've kept this house for you since Mother died. And I've never complained. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm a burden. I didn't say that. I'm plain and dull. I don't want a social life. I don't want the effort you have to make to attract a man. But you don't have to put me down all the time. Especially when I was so happy over buying this coat. Mary. Your stupid pot pie is burning. <laughs> Finish that uh, promotion piece yet, Mary? On the last page, Mr. Becker. Oh, good. How about lunch when you finish? I had a lunch date cancel out on me, and I'd like to talk to you about the Edison account. Well, uh... Oh, all right, sure. We'll go to the blue door. Get your coat. There's always a crowd at the door. Good to get in early. I won't be a minute. We're going to be pretty careful with the Edison trade show next month. I think they're sniffing out a new public relations firm. It certainly wouldn't be good to lose that account. Well, what's this? Mink? <laughs> oh, yes. I-, I got it yesterday. Well, congratulations, Mary. Who is he? He? The new flame. The guy who thought enough of you to buy you that mink jacket. Oh, oh, but you don't understand. I... Don't worry, Mary. I won't press you. Your personal life is your business. I bought it. You bought it? I did. I've always wanted one. And last week, I... <laughs> okay, okay. That's a good cover-up. Pardon the pun. <laughs> but, Mary, it doesn't fool me. You've got a guy on a string. And I'm delighted. <laughs> Several weeks after that, I'd noticed Mr. Becker looking at me and smiling. It made me awfully uncomfortable, as though he was sharing a secret with me that wasn't true. But I kept on wearing the jacket because I loved it. The feel of it. The elegance. And then, one day at the office... I'll get it, Mary. You keep on stuffing those envelopes. Becker and Company, Roger Becker here. May I speak to Miss Oates, please? Oh, sure. Just a second. It's for you. It's a man. Hello? Miss Oates? Uh, this is Joe Dugan at the Fashion Fur Outlet. Oh, oh, yes. Hello. Uh, we'd like to follow up on our customers, and uh, we just wanted to know if a coat met your expectations. Oh, it's lovely. I'm just overwhelmed by it. Mm-hmm. Very glad to hear that. I hope you'll recommend us to your friends. I'd be delighted. Certainly. 
It's so nice of you to call. I did want to tell you that we're having a wine and cheese party to show off some new styles. Friday at 8 p.m. if you'd like to come. Friday at 8? Uh, yes, I'll remember. Thanks again. Thank you, Miss Oates. Goodbye. Goodbye. I won't say a word. Oh, that was... You don't have to explain, Mary. I can guess who that was, and it's okay. I don't mind you taking personal calls, you know that. But you don't understand. Friday at 8, huh? Won't leave a little early? No. Uh, there's no reason... Well... <laughs> That's nice of you, Mr. Becker. Uh, perhaps I will. Glad to assist the course of true love. I know Bert will appreciate it. Uh, Bert? Yes. His name's Bert. I guess it was awful of me to lie to Mr. Becker that way. To make him think I was talking to a suitor. But he kept after me so much, I decided to go along with the doctor. Well, that's not uncommon. Why did you call him Bert? It was the first name that popped into my head. I had a cousin named Bert, Burton Brush. I hadn't seen him since Mother's funeral 14 years ago. The name came in handy. Did Mr. Becker continue to believe you had a suitor? Oh, yes. And I didn't try to discourage him after that. I thought how nice it would be to have someone caring for me. But I think I went a bit far. What do you mean? A few days later... I went into a florist shop in town and ordered a dozen red roses sent to myself in care of Becker and Company. And I signed the card. Love, Bert. Well, what's this roses last week? A basket of fruit today? From Bert. Help yourself. Have a good time last night? Oh, we danced till 2 a.m., it was wonderful. And of course, I was just making it up. But it was beginning to be fun. You holding something back from me, Mary? What do you mean, Dad? Well, um... All right, I'll come right out and say it. You and your boss having a... Um... Well, you know what I mean. No, of course not. Well, he takes you to lunch now. All of a sudden, you're buying new dresses and... Fussing up a fancy new hairdo. You never paid much attention to yourself before. And I'm realizing my mistake. Well, a woman doesn't fuss herself up over nothing. And there's always a man involved when she does. I just hope he's not married with a wife and four kids in the suburbs. A business lunch is hardly an affair. Okay, okay, if it's not your boss, bound to be somebody. And what if there is... <laughs> Yes, Mary? Yes. Big date tonight with Bert, huh? Uh, yes. Any idea where you're going? Mm, no. Not really. It'll be a surprise. A real surprise. Now, the pumpkin patch is better for later hours. If it's dinner, try Solomon's. Best lobster in Newburgh in the state. The pumpkin patch. Sounds quaint. Of course, she probably has the evening all planned. I can never be sure with Bert. Well, anyway, have fun. You know something, Mr. Becker? Tonight, I will. I didn't go home after work that day. I called Dad and told him I was meeting an old school chum. I went to a movie. And then I made up my mind. i have never done anything like this before. I was scared. But I knew if I didn't do it now... I never would. I had on my new dress. I was wearing my mint jacket. So about 10 o'clock, I took a deep breath and headed for the pumpkin patch. Quite a step for quiet little Mary Oates. Stepping out for an evening. Amazing what a new mink and a compliment from the boss can do. It appears she's going to live her own life the way she wants to from now on. I wonder if she's going at it a little too fast, though. We'll see what happens when I return shortly with that, too.
sometimes we have to take a great leap, make a dramatic change in our lives. Complacency is the mother of inactivity, and without activity we shrivel, do nothing, and return to complacency. Mary Oates, as a result of a fur coat and a misunderstanding, has experienced a great change in her life. New clothes, a new hairdo, and more important, a new attitude. Let's join her as she rather timorously enters the pumpkin patch. Evening, miss. Good evening. What will it be? Um, uh, white wine, please. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, hello. Don't think I've seen you in here before. Uh, no, no, this is my first time. Uh-huh. You're expecting somebody? Somebody? Are you meeting someone here? No, I... I just dropped in. Well, in that case, I'm Bert. And I'm... Your name is Bert? That's right. Shouldn't it be? <laughs> well, it's, it's just a coincidence, that's all. A remarkable coincidence. You got a guy named Bert? Uh, no, not exactly. <sighs> Forget it, please. I'm Mary. Pleased to meet you, Mary. White wine for the lady? Thank you very much. It's five enough. Compliments to the gentleman, yes? Uh, Mary, um... You want to tell me something? What? What's the problem? A guy? He usually is. I don't know what you mean. Well, this is the first time you've ever been in a place like this. No. Uh, well, I mean, um... I I've been in bars before. Sure, sure, if you say so. Oh, all right. This is my first time. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. This is the first time for everyone and everything. Relax. I wish I could. Want another white wine? Oh, I... I couldn't have finished that one so quickly. <laughs> Help the medicine go down or something like that. Uh, Jack. Uh, so, Mary, uh, what do you do? Got a job? Or? Oh, yes. I'm secretary to a public relations executive. You know, I believe you are. Why shouldn't you believe me? Well, they usually say they're vice president of a cosmetics firm or an actress just in from Hollywood. <laughs> me? An executive or an actress? <laughs> this is your first time in a place like this. Oh, here's the wine. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, Bert. I'm not nervous anymore. Good. I think you're honest. An honest man. Thank you. Say... How about a dance? Nothing like a dance to break the ice. Dance? Oh, oh no, not me. Why not? I, I don't, I don't know any steps. I mean, I don't. Come never... on, you never know till you try. I mean, look at them. All you do is just move around to the beat. Come on. Oh, Bert, really? <laughs> Am I doing all right? Perfect. I think you're still teasing me, but I don't care. I'm beginning to enjoy it. And that's how Bert and I met, Doctor. He was good-looking, kind. And I killed him. She couldn't have him. She couldn't. It was the first love I'd ever had in my life. Easy, Mary, slowly. Who talk later? No. No, I want to tell you now. I want to talk about Bert. All right, Mary. I didn't think I'd ever see him again after that night. Oh, he took my phone number. But you know how it is. But then, three days later... <coughs> Becker and Company, good morning. Miss Oates speaking. Uh, good morning, Miss Oates. May I help you? That depends. You know who this is? Bert. The one and only. Pride of the pumpkin patch. <laughs> I, uh, just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed your company Tuesday night. It was mutual. Anyone who could get me to dance has to be someone special. Oh, thanks for the compliment. Say, how about a return engagement tonight? Uh, tonight? Oh, well, my father expects his dinner at a regular time. If I... Okay, okay, I know, I know it's short notice, and 
I wouldn't be interested in a girl who didn't have other plans for a Friday night. Oh, no. No, it's not like that. It's, it's no, just... no, no, no. Don't apologize. Uh, maybe I can make a phone call and... Uh... When you're finished, Mary. Oh, Bert, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. Becker wants me. Can I call you back? Yeah, I'll call you. Uh, half an hour? Maybe you can change your plans. Yeah. I know I can. I'll call you. Bye, Bert. Well, you didn't have to cut it short. He really shouldn't call me here. That's all right. I'm glad to see you so happy. You certainly have taken on a style. Thank you. Well, that's a work. Now come in and bring your pad. The dinner was just wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. This is one of my favorite places where I only bring my favorite people. I'm one of your favorite people? Oh, sure. From the moment I swung around on the bar stool at the pumpkin patch last week, you're, you're a lovely woman, Mary. Honest. I don't know quite what to say. Mary, I, I want to see a, a lot more of you. I'd like that, Bert. Say, how about, how about skating at Central Park a week from Sunday? Me? <laughs> Skate? Oh, I haven't been on ice skates since I was 12. Oh, no. I'll teach you. I'd look ridiculous. And and besides, I can't. Why can't you? My father and I always go to the movies on Sunday afternoon. It's a sort of tradition. We've been doing it for years. I can't disappoint him. Maybe it's time you broke with tradition. Can I let you know? Well, okay. No, no, wait. I'll say yes right now. After all, I have some right to my life, too. That's the spirit. Oh, uh, Mary, uh, excuse me a minute, okay? Sure. Will there be anything else, miss? Oh, uh, no, thank you. I just wondered what happened to my escort. He said he'd be right back. Did you see him go out by any chance? Uh, no, 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 miss. He left more than half an hour ago. Well, I have to get home to my father. I'll pay the check. Becker and Company, good morning. Miss Oates speaking. Mary, it's Bert. Oh, uh, hello. Mary, I, I don't know how to apologize for last night, but uh, please, please don't hang up on me. I won't hang up. You see, I, I went out to get a pack of cigarettes and I met this friend. I haven't seen him since college, and... When I went back to the table, you were gone. Bert, you were gone for half an hour. It was terribly embarrassing for me. I didn't mind paying the check, but the waiter looked at me so strange. I was only gone five minutes, but... Well, it was rude of me, I know. Maybe it seemed like five minutes. Are we, uh... Are we still on for next Sunday? I'll... I'll have to let you know. I haven't spoken to my father yet. Square it with your father for Sunday. I'll call you tomorrow night. I still can't believe that we're not going to the movies. Dad, get Mr. Carson to go with you. Not the same thing. You and I have been going every Sunday for ten years. I know, Dad. I know. I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. Yeah, it just seems to me you're losing your head over this guy. Only known him, what, a couple of weeks? That has nothing to do with it. Dad, at my age, I have to take any chance I get for a little happiness. I didn't know you were unhappy here with me. I'm not marrying the man. I'm simply going skating. Oh, what's the use? Bert's picking me up. You can see for yourself. He isn't a threat to anyone. Hello? Mary. Mary, it's Bert. Uh, yes, I know. I, I was expecting... Uh, look, uh, Mary, uh, my car broke down. Oh. Your transmission's been giving me trouble. Um, do you mind meeting me at the park? Oh, no. For a minute, I thought, no, I wouldn't mind. Great, great. I'll be there in about uh, 15 minutes. We'll have a great day. Oh, I know we will. Bye. Well? Bert's car broke down. That mean he's not coming here for you? I'm meeting him at Central Park. Oh, when I was courting, man always picked the girl up at her home. Plenty of men still do. It's silly for him to come all the way here. Why? Where does he live? I, uh... I don't know. You don't know where he lives? 
You meet him at restaurants, Central Park. You don't know anything about this man. I'll get to know him. You know, Mary, if you'd had a lot of suitors, if you'd had some experience with men, it'd be different. This guy's the first one to pay any attention to you. Now, I don't want you to get hurt, that's all. And you will. Believe me, you will. <laughs> easy when you get used to it. Oh, wildly. I feel ridiculous. Now, I just, you, I just hang on to my arm. Now, now, careful. Now, put, put your weight on your right foot. Now, lean forward just a bit. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh this is maybe fun for some people, no, but... No, no, no. You're doing fine. Oh, please, let's rest. Okay. Okay. Can you make it over to that bench? Let's come up. Uh-huh. Let's, uh... My ankle. Oh, you know, maybe we should have done something uh, a little easier, huh? Here, come on, sit down. Oh, no. It's fun to do something I've never done before. Yeah, well, when you're looking at it that way. You've opened up a whole new world for me, Bert. I'm glad. I dine in restaurants. I go places. And here I am, skating in Central Park. <laughs> well, hardly skating. Well, you know, it's fun for me, too, to see you enjoy such simple things. We've only known each other a short time. But I feel I've known you for years. I'm, I'm so comfortable with you. I feel the same way with you. I've been meaning to ask you where you live. When my father asked me this morning, and I suddenly realized I didn't know. I'm in the village. You want to see my place? Oh, well, someday, perhaps. We could go there for coffee this afternoon. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe another time. Uh. Well, speaking of coffee, why don't I uh, go and get us some? There's a stand on the other side of the rink. I'd love that. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, excuse me. Uh, did a man in a red plaid hunting jacket and a white fur cap buy coffee here in the past half hour? Well, I didn't see him, miss. And I'd sure remember if he was dressed like that. Thank you. Well, how was the skate? I didn't skate. My ankles hurt. Now, you're home early. We could still make the four o'clock show. I don't feel like it, Dad. What's the matter? That guy let you down? I don't understand. I just don't understand. What'd he do? He just left me sitting there while he went for coffee. And he never came back. Just like the other night. Uh, I knew it. I told you you'd get hurt. He wanted me to go to his apartment. And I wouldn't. <laughs> I guess that's the last I'll see of him. And then good riddance. Because that's all he wanted from you. <laughs> when we starve for food, sometimes we eat too quickly and suffer the consequences. When we start for love and attention, we can respond too quickly and suffer the consequences. But the new romance of Mary Oates is far from over. It now begins its climactic journey to that tragic ending when she kills the only man who gave her love. We'll learn why when I return shortly with Act Three. Love is blind. That old cliché has more truth than poetry. To quote another old saw, Mary Oates, in love for the first time in her life, is willing to overlook any unseemly behavior in the first man who ever made her feel like a woman. His erratic behavior and suddenly leaving her when they're out together confuses Mary. She doesn't understand, but she forgives. For love is blind. He called to apologize the next day, Doctor. Didn't you think it strange for him to just leave you, both in the restaurant and the park? Oh, yes, I did. But then he'd call and I'd forget my hurt. All that mattered was that he still wanted to see me. As the days went by, we did lots of things. The theater. I'd only been to a Broadway play once in my life. Now we were going almost regularly. And we'd always go to the pumpkin patch for drinks after the theater. 
or sometimes just for the evening. I was in heaven. I knew it was too good to be true. Somehow I knew it wouldn't last. One night, three weeks ago, I'd gone to the pumpkin patch to meet him. He wasn't there, so I ordered my wine and waited. The usual, Miss Oates? Yes, Jack, thanks. You haven't seen Bert tonight, have you? Uh, no, no, I haven't. He's meeting me here. I'll just have to wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Miss Oates. Whatever you like. Not very busy tonight. Well, we have our off nights like anyone else. Oh, here comes Bert. Well, uh, I, uh, I, I gotta tend the other end of the bar. Excuse me? Hello, darling. I thought you were gonna stand me up. Hello, Mary. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, uh, yes, there is. I can hear it in your voice, see it in your face. Mary, I... Lord, this is, this is tough. What is it, Bert? Are you in trouble? Uh, no, Mary, come on. Come on over to the booth. We can uh, we can talk better privately. All right. Now, please, Bert, tell me what's bothering you. Maybe I can help. You can by by understanding. Understanding? What? Now, look, Mary, we we've had a couple of fun months together. Yes, we have. You're a wonderful person, the kind of person any guy would like to be married to. Bert! Oh, Bert, darling. I can't believe I'm hearing this. You want me to marry you. Mary, it's it's so hard to say. You said it, darling. And my answer is yes, 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 yes. It's more than I ever dreamed. Mary, you don't understand. I... I'm not asking you to marry me. I, I, I said you were the kind of girl any guy would like to marry. I, I'm... I'm so terribly confused. What are you telling me? Mary, I can't see you anymore. What? I'm going to be married. You're going to be married? Next month. But... Oh, months. The, the time we've, we've had together, I, I thought... I met Gail after I met you. I, I didn't think it would happen like it did. I, I still admire and, and respect you, but I'm in love with Gail. This is like something out of a bad movie or a bad dream. I, I know how you must feel. I'll wake up tomorrow and realize it's a dream. But you haven't said these things. I'll expect your call. It's over, Mary. I'm sorry. Over? Over? It's just a sound. Over? It doesn't have any meaning. Mary, please, c come on. We, we, we better go. I I'll take you home. You go. Just go. Go. I mean, there isn't any more to say. I'm I, I, I'm sorry, Mary. Oh. Go! Oh. Miss Oates. I I'm sorry, Jack. I, I shouldn't have caused a scene. I'm, uh, I'm going home now. And then what? I couldn't say Stad and his I told you so. I knew I'd get a lecture on how right he was about Bert. I didn't let on to him anything was wrong. But the office was a different story. Lovers quarrel? <laughs> it shows that much? Mm hmm. It shows. It's more than a lover's quarrel. He's going to be married. Oh. That is rough. What hurts so much? It's someone he met after me. If he'd been engaged all along, well, I could call him a heel and forget him. But I thought I was... Oh, oh maybe I was expecting too much. Uh, it's a surprise to me. I mean, he was really rushing you. So it seemed. Uh, Mary, you want to take some time off? Things are slack right now. Thanks. But what good would it do? I can't run for myself. I'd just sit around with Dad and brood. Well, okay. But, Mary, anything you want, you just ask, right? 
Right. I'll be back around three. Lunch with J.J. always lasts two and a half hours. See you later. Becker and Company, Miss Oates speaking. Mary? What do you want? I, I just couldn't walk away from you like that. We were both upset. I, I want to know you understand. How can I understand? Why should I understand? Just say thanks for the fun? You don't know what you've done to me. Mary, can I meet you one more time? What's the use? What's the use of that? Please. All right. All right. Let's see each other face to face again. I don't know how you can look me in the eye after what you've done. But yes, let's meet. Maybe I'll understand after all. Thanks, Mary, for making it easier for me. Pumpkin patch tomorrow at nine? Fine. The pumpkin patch. Tomorrow at nine. The next day I asked Mr. Becker for a long lunch hour And I went to the local police precinct I'd like to get a gun permit, please A small handgun You see, I live with my elderly father And what with all the crime and people breaking in and all I really need protection I don't even feel safe walking the streets Sorry if I'm late I just got here What difference would it make anyway? It's our goodbye, final meeting, fade out, etc I'm sorry, Mary Oh, sorry, sorry Sorry is just a word And a board game You ever play that game? Every time you put another player out, you say, sorry and you don't mean it. You're tickled pink. I don't see any point to this, Mary. Oh, but I do. You're going off to someone else. We should have one last fling together after all these months. And here, where we first met. I'm sorry it has to end this way. Look, so am I, Mary, but... I don't think you know what I mean. I do. You're wonderful to understand. I, I'm in love with Gail, Thanks for not making it too difficult for me. You still don't understand what I mean. When I say I'm sorry, it has to end this way. Well, what do you mean? This! And now he's dead, Doctor. And so am I. As dead as I was before I met him. Maybe more so. I'm going to leave you now, Miss Oates. I'll be back. Are they taking me to jail? Uh, you'll be released to your father in a few days. He'll be here to see you shortly. He'll be so disgraced. I can't face him. It's time for another sedative. I'll be in to see you later. Um, Mr. Oates? Yes, you can uh, you can see Mary for a few minutes. Oh, how is she, Doctor? Is she, she going to be all right? Well, she told me the whole story. Uh, this um, this man she spoke of, uh, Bert. Uh, did you did you ever meet him? No, no, he never came to the house. Uh, I knew she was seeing a man. I mean, she'd get you no, know, no, all dressed up and go out. Yes, yes. Well, I'll talk with you again, Mister Oates. Uh, don't. Stay too long with me. Uh, Mr. Becker, uh, did her gentleman friend ever call for her here at the office? No, Doctor. Never. Uh, well, but he did uh, phone her here. Oh, yes. Uh, he sent flowers and fruit. He must have been crazy about her. And the fur coat, of course. Uh, did you ever speak to her? The first time he called, yes. I answered the phone and he asked for Mary. Uh, he has certainly changed her life. I can't believe she'd turn to such violence even after he left her. Yes, well, thank you, Mr. Becker. I'll probably talk with you again. Sorry 
Sorry, sir. The bar doesn't open until 11 a.m. Uh, no, no, no. Nothing for me, thanks. Uh, you, uh, you're uh, Jack? Uh, that's right. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm Dr. Howard Edwards, a psychiatrist, Memorial Hospital. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm treating Miss Mary Oates, uh, the woman who did the shooting last night. Yes. Um, Jack, can you tell me anything that might be of some help? I've, uh, I've heard her story. Yeah, well, uh, she started coming in about three, maybe four months ago. Nice-looking woman, but nervous. I knew she didn't frequent the bars. First time here. All of a sudden, she starts talking to herself and nodding her head just like she was with someone, you know? Yes, and then she was alone. Uh, no one at the bar spoke to her. No. I thought maybe she was a little creepy, but well, she didn't bother anybody. She'd come in a lot after that, sit in the corner with her wine and talk to herself. Well, she wasn't violent before last night. Oh, no, no, no. Only last week, she said she was expecting someone. And all of a sudden, she starts shouting, Go, 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 she said. And then last night, she's sitting at the bar. And all of a sudden, pow, she pulls out a gun and starts shooting at the mirror behind the bar. What's going to happen to my Mary, Doctor? Well, she is therapy, Mr. Oates. This man was very real to her. He was real to me, too. I never met him or talked to him on the phone, but the way Mary was acting, I'd have sworn that she had a boyfriend. I mean, you know, she'd bring home playbills from the theater, other souvenirs. Well, hers was an incredible hallucination. She actually went to those places, skating their theater. But she was always alone. She made up every conversation. Oh, but if she was just imagining this guy, why would why would she imagine that he would jilt her? And why would she try to kill him? No, it was a basic insecurity. She couldn't believe that a dream had come true. And since he was her creation, she let herself think he'd be untrue to her. I should have been more understanding of Mary. Maybe I'm to blame in a way. I... I kept her home. We'll help her all we can. Will they let me go to the funeral, Doctor? No, Mary. You'll have to start forgetting Bert. Forget him? I'll remember him until the day I die. He gave me four of the most exciting months of my life. You don't forget someone like that, Doctor. Ever. Mary will remember the man she claims gave her the happiest months of her life. But if she does, she'll remember too that she killed him. Perhaps under therapy she'll realize her hallucination. She'll be persuaded that Bert was only a figment of her imagination and that she hasn't killed anyone. And then she'll know that indeed no man has ever paid her any attention. She had to do it all herself. I'll be back shortly.